Alright, hey guys. Um, I was called by RJ Gray, um, kind of last minute, I guess, and um, uh, he asked me to help him uh, go out to Perryton, Texas, well, that's where I was stationed, and I had no clue what I was really getting into. It was Thursday of finals week that he had called and needed someone just kind of last minute. And then that Monday, I started going to Perryton and looking for a house, and I was pretty excited. Um, I was nerve wracking because I didn't know exactly what I was gonna, uh, getting myself into. Um, but it was overall a great experience, and here is a show, share it with you. Um, I was in Perryton, Texas, which is in up in the very panhandle of Texas, and for my house in Perryton, it's about a two and a half hour drive. I always have to drive everywhere I go, and then I know. Um, anytime I come up here to Stillwater, it's going to take me at least three and a half hours. And I don't know how the drive was for you coming from Perryton, um, or going from Stillwater to Perryton. I assume it was a long drive, but... You can't go quite that No, line. no. Mm -hmm. It's sure enough not a straight shot line, but um, it was a great experience. I didn't get to go home every weekend. I'm one of those that I will end up being home all the time, but um, Perryton was a pretty decent sized town. Um, I think it said about 7,700 people. And, lots of stuff going on. They had lots of festivals and stuff while I was there. But um, Perryton Equity um, is the main branch and it, it started in 1919, just a little bit of background information. And then towards the early 80s, it had all the way up to 35 uh, local stations. Um, all, not all of them are full running, operating all the time. Most of them are, or some of them are seasonal. And now they're down to 19. And this is kind of the range where it goes. Um, we only have two up in Kansas, five in Oklahoma, and the rest are in the Texas Panhandle. And um, here I am with my general manager, Sean Hughes. Um, he's very, very intelligent. Um, I know Mark was talking about um, having stoplights. We have those out of the elevators. And then also we have the scale interface. Instead of stamping the ticket, it's all entered online. That way you don't have to go from putting it on the ticket to entering in the computer. You just enter it on the computer, bam, it's there. Um, but there's not room for error at all. That's the only downside to that. Um, not all of our stations have the scale interface. That's something that they're working on as soon as they're waiting for the stampers uh, to out, just shut down or quit on them. That way they can get a new one to enter it in on the computer. Um, funny story about this picture was, I did get an office, I felt very special, however, um, uh, not 10 minutes after I took this picture, Sean came in and told me, Sarah, we hired a new finance manager, so he's going to take this office now. Mm -hmm. So I got moved to the office next door, just had a desk, but um, it was very nice for them to at least have a place for me, not just kind of sitting me in a corner somewhere. Um, I was in the office for a little over half my internship, um, working on special projects. Um, the first thing I worked on was our customer service survey list, and I basically had to gather a certain number of customers that we wanted to send out the survey to, which I'll talk about a little more um, later. Um, I also got to uh, work with Jerry Crowell, one of our agronomists, to help advertise their answer plot event, which I'll go into a little more later. Um, we also worked during wheat harvest for a few weeks. Wheat harvest wasn't very long in Perryton this summer due to lots of rain and it was just a weird harvest season. Um, I did my daily protein and dockage tests on all the samples that came in from the different locations in the morning time. And then after I got done with those, I went straight to the scale house to help during harvest. Um, and then, like Mark had said earlier, um, for the people with the Oklahoma Ag Cooperative Council, we were in charge of our own special project for that, um, which was a paper that we had to write. Um, for my survey, I originally thought that I'd just get about 500 random names. and. Uh, get those together, but it was a little more detailed than that. I would have to get people who were top selling in the grain and the seed and the uh, fertilizers. And why we did that was this makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about it, but you have out of you only have 20% of your customers that do 80% or more of your business, which does make a lot of sense now. I didn't think about that then. Um, and then, of course, it was really tedious. Um, we had several accounts that were joint accounts, and then some that were duplicate, account, duplicate accounts. You have people that, yes, they do sell a lot of grain, and then they buy lots of fertilizer. I mean, there were just several, and you had to weed them out. And finally, after I got all those, we ended up getting 625 addresses. And I didn't send out the results. Um, at the time, I didn't, ha I didn't have the results yet, but I do now. Um, at the time, I did not mail out the surveys. We sent them up to CHS, which is the big cooperative uh, nationally 
Um, and they mailed out the surveys and got them back and they did the results for me. I was just more so in charge of pulling all these names in out of the different fields. <coughs> and then also my next project, a couple weeks later, I worked with uh, Jerry Crowell to advertise our answer plot. And uh, answer plots, there are I think 154 um, across the nation right now. And uh, they're basically just like 20 acre plots of corn and soybeans, I think is what they mostly grow right now. Um, working with those and showing farmers, you know, how you can increase your increase your yields and your profits. Um, I know a lot of people are just hard set on, well, this is how dad did it. This is how grandpa did it, great grandpa did it. And we're trying to show them, you know, this, it doesn't matter so much about the money. It's how you can increase and better uh, your production. Um, what's really great about this is that the farmers can actually see it and touch it and feel it for themselves. Um, some are like, oh, well, you cherry pick these, you pick these to show us, oh, well, our products are better. No, they can, the, the answer plots are for the farmers. They can go out there anytime they want and compare the different um, crops that are out there um, and the different herbicides. Like, for instance, a picture on the left is a field that didn't get sprayed with any herbicides, and so it's just overtaken with weeds. And by the time the corn is that tall, it already knows how long its tassel is going to be and how big its ears are going to be. And then the uh, corn on the right, it was sprayed, and then it doesn't have any. It's not having a problem at all. But the thing about this is the corn is at the exact, both of these are at the exact same stage. Which one would you rather have? The couple uh, rows on the right or the couple on the left? It's pretty obvious to me. Um, you're definitely going to have uh, a lot more bushels come from the corn that's on the left. Um, and like I said, during wheat harvest, the different branches would bring in their composite samples. They'll take a little sample from each truck that comes in and then ship it up to uh, Perryton for me to take in the back room and I'll have a protein machine and run it through there. Our protein would range really widely, go from anywhere from nine to 14. Obviously, anywhere around 14 is probably gonna be the best. And then right after I got done there, I go to the scale house and that just consisted of weighing trucks and the uh, usual moisture and dockage uh, tests. I never got to go in the elevator. If I could do anything else, I wish I had a lot more time to go in the elevator because for this project, that's a lot what it was about was the grain handling and receiving. And I mean, I did have it when it came in, so I knew about the moisture and dockage, but I didn't so much know about what all went on in the elevator side. Um, and like Mark had said, our topics were aeration and equipment. And I also have a this handout that kind of shows exactly what our project was that we did. Um, and then kind of as I think back about it, I really liked the answer plot. Um, when I took uh, our intro to uh, plant and soil science, I really liked it. And so having done this, it was something that I'm more interested in. I know I'm taking soil science next fall. And so I'm really kind of looking forward to taking that to see where this is going to go. I never really thought that I'd be too into agronomy or anything like that, but after having done the answer plot, I'm really more interested. Um, one of the things that I wrote on my contract was that I wanted to sit in during the board meeting, and unfortunately that never happened with uh, time and uh, being busy during wheat harvest. Um, just to kind of see how the board members act, uh, how they conducted their meetings. And then, um, again, like I said, I wish I had more time in the elevator because I felt like I was at a slight disadvantage for this um, paper that we had to write because I know that, Mark, you've been there for three years, you know exactly how it goes, and Chad, I'm not sure if you were in the elevator a lot, but I mean, I wasn't, and so I felt like I was kind of at a disadvantage for that because I never got to spend time there. And then um, also, this internship was a really great networking opportunity, meeting so many different people, and then I know with the Ag Cooperative Council, all of us 15 interns, we go and talk to uh, senators at the uh, state capitol, and then we uh, talk with people from CHS and from CoBank, all these different places. And so it's a great way to get our faces and our names out there, uh, a good way to network. And that's all.